you okay? I can do it. That it can impact structural changes in the brain. I feel like a proud mama. <laughs> Exercise, meditation, these are great to live our best lives. There's always a wall you hit when it's all about criticism. It is 100% worth it. Ah, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's not fun. But if I need to do it, I'll do it. I've been an athlete since I can ever remember. I'm Patricia Domingo. I was actually trying to bring my boxing career to the next level. Until I saw that the path was not gonna work for me, I became a personal trainer, I became a boxing instructor, but because of the fact that I'm not competing. When it comes to training, I don't take it as serious as I used to. If I said I wouldn't quit. The fire as an athlete, I, I lost it. And I want it back. If you ask me what I do for recovery, it is water, get some nutritious food, and go to sleep, you know, catch my breath, and hopefully the next day I just feel better. Definitely, I need to get some teams on how to, you know, take care of my body after a nice workout. There's not one recovery style for everyone. It's it's very individualized. And so when it actually comes to like full on recovery, you said that your methods are like slim to none. <laughs> <laughs> I just sleep it in, drink water and try to eat healthy. If you can integrate stretching into your warm up your joints may be a little bit more warm. You might have more range of motion in some of your muscles. So think of stretching as something that you need to rely on as much as you need to rely on getting your body warm for your workout. All right, let's get Camilo out of the winners. Thank you, Amy. There you go. Okay, kid. I can definitely see the tension now. Mm. Wow, it's so crazy. Okay, I did my stretching. And now I'm ready to work out. You actually feel good. Like your body feels good after you are working on it. It's just hard to find time to actually do it. So if you think about it, we kind of have two systems in the body. We've got like what we'd call our fight and flight system and we've got what we call our rest and digest system. Okay. Yeah. So when you're when you're competing, you're going into that that state of kind of that fight or flight system. Yeah. Where actually your adrenaline is up, your heart rate is up. And actually, that's really helpful for performance most of the time. But it's not healthy if we are to stay in that heightened state of arousal the whole time. So actually what we need to be able to do is bring our arousal levels down and enable our rest and digest system to take over, which is effectively our recovery system. It enables the body to kind of relax. It takes your heart rate down. That means your oxygen's getting round as much as it can through the muscles, through your deep breathing, which then means the next day, actually you're ready to reactivate your fight and flight system again. To give that balance. It, yeah, exactly, to get that balance. Some of these recovery things, it's trying to see it as a performance choice. Yeah. I'm not just doing this for the sake of it. I know that this is really actually yeah, helping to aid my performance. Boxing is not a low impact sport. You know, my body just beat up after training. My neck hurts, my knuckles hurt, my elbows, and even sometimes I can't even lift my own arms. So I just think that I'm ready to change my recovery routine and to get into something more specific. Because you're training so intensely every day, I think it, we can maybe add something to your recovery routine. And yeah. if you have a paper cup, you just fill it with water and then put it in the freezer. And then once it freezes, you can 
take down half of the cup. Yeah. So then you can hold the part of the cup that still has paper around it. And then you target the area and you move the cup around, keep moving it. So you don't want to hold the ice on it for a long time. You want to keep moving around the like targeted area uh, and then do that until your hand is like numb pretty much. So with that, you can just target a, a really small portion of your hand or, or your ankle or whatever it is. Yeah. There's another method that you can try this this week if uh, if you're open to it. Done. <laughs> Have you ever heard of um, like contrasting or like cold tub, hot tub kind of thing? I have. I have. Have you done any of that before? Do you have any experience? I've never. Okay. No. You can just do it in the shower a couple times, three cycles of that. <laughs> <laughs> if you went through the first one, or you, you can do the second one. <laughs> it just gets the blood flowing in all areas of your body and it yeah. helps promote recovery and, and prevents muscle soreness. Like it's something out of my comfort, comfort zone. Well, it sounds like a lot of the recovery methods might be out of here. <laughs> it's going to be kind of like that. <laughs> okay, I'm giving myself 30 seconds. One, two, It works, but it sucks. And I won't do it unless it's super necessary or worth it. Oh. I don't know, I just didn't never think about it. I did not think about it, you know, and I knew, I knew stretching is important, you know, don't get me wrong, I knew it. Now, I did not make that a priority into my workout. You know, I was more focused on the work that I want to do instead of working on my body and on my mind. <laughs> Understanding how important it is your mind and your body connection. That fly or fight state versus rest and digest, you know, and how the body and the mind needs both states for us to be balanced. I want my mind and body to work for the longest. I can dedicate 10 minutes a day in order for me to gain years later along the road. Along the road. <laughs>